Hi, Epiphany. Happy Friday. Hope you've had a great week. I uh, hope you've enjoyed studying Holy Scripture. Hope you've had a chance to enjoy some of the beautiful weather uh, that we have had. I hope you've had a chance to be in touch with people you love. That's important. Uh, I hope you've continued praying for your church because that's helpful in these times when we're separated. I think it's important that people know that we're connected to the power of prayer in the name of Jesus. So, here we go. Uh, last, yesterday, Jesus walked on water, right? He did something that is just, that's, you know, it's hard to believe. It's outside the scope of the thing that we can imagine. And that should be as it is. Really, there should be things that we can't understand. There are things that we don't understand. I mean, little things. Like sometimes people will do things, and you'll say, I do not understand how that person could have done that thing, right? Um... And then there's big things that we don't understand. So anyway, let's get in uh, and start chapter 6, verse 22, and say what, see where that leads us today, okay? The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there. They also saw that Jesus had not got into that boat with the disciples, but that the disciples had gone away alone. So, where's Jesus? That's the question. <laughs> then some boats from Tiberias come near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Uh, any surprise? Boats are coming from Tiberias. No question that at, after 5,000 were fed, some guys hoofed it all the way around through Capernaum, around the lake, down to Tiberias, and they said, uh, we just witnessed Jesus uh, feeding 5,000 people with two lo five loaves and two pieces of fish. And, and so now, now the guys at Tiberias, they, instead of following him, they jump in a couple of boats and they head over to see what the heck happened. Now remember, there are about 5,000 there. Maybe there's fewer. Maybe some folks have gone home. Um, and so the people, if there was enough room in the boats, there was probably a lot of boats trying to figure out what was going on. So they, they uh, come to the shore. Um, so the crowd, um, here we go, uh, verse 23. Uh, then some boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. They were curious, right? So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and they went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. Where is Jesus? Verse 25. When they found Jesus on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, teacher, when did you come here? And Jesus answered them, Jesus, right? He answers the question that they're really asking. Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the sign, the sign of the kingdom of God, the sign of the second person of the Trinity, the sign of eternal life, You came looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Right, right. I mean, you can't hardly blame them. Uh, there were times when people did not have enough to eat. There were times when people starved to death. To have somebody that could feed you all the time, that you always knew you always had enough food all the time, good food, fish and barley loaves. You can't blame them. But it just speaks to the short-sightedness of our human nature as well. Jesus goes on to say, Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that the Father has set his seal. So Jesus is saying, We were made for our effort to be toward working for relationship with, or the food that God feeds us. And, uh, and, and the people hear this, and maybe you're hearing this today, and you're saying, what the heck is that? What is the food for eternal life? Somebody help! Hello? What? You know, I need, I need to sustain this thing that, that walks and talks and moves through the world. Right? I need to work for food, and food perishes. 
What is this other food? Tell me. They say, then, uh, verse 28, then they said to Jesus, what must we do to perform the works of God? Right? And Jesus answers them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. So, how do we work for this imperishable food? What is the work that we do? And Jesus says it's believing in him whom God sent. So believe is an interesting word. Let's just touch on it for a second, and I'll leave you with it to contemplate or to think about it this weekend. Belief is the capacity for seeing with the soul. Okay, so, so these eyes see this world. The soul, which is the eternal part of us, is the ability to see what God, God's big picture, God's kingdom. And so to believe is to see with the eyes of the soul. And when we see with the eyes of the soul, when we believe in Jesus, we are seeing Jesus in his eternal capacity. We are seeing Jesus as the progenitor of all things that are made and all things are made good. We're seeing Jesus as the holder of the um, of that which links us all together. And that is, well, the word we know it as, is love. And so, so Jesus says, believe in him. See with the eyes of your soul the person of Jesus right here, right now, in the past, in the future, the king of the kingdom of God. And when you believe in Jesus, well, then you live a particular kind of life, right? A life where you are not worried, that you see joy, that you engage in mystery. I hope you're not worried. I hope you see joy. And I hope you engage in mystery. Have a good weekend. I hope to... To know you're with me Sunday, fiber optically, May 3rd. I'm giving a class after the service in a webinar. You can find out how to get there through our website. I do hope you join me. Bring your questions about anything you want, uh, and I'll do whatever I can to answer. Uh, and um, know I pray for you. Know that I love you. And peace upon your soul.